if you don't remember, um, a guy named Bu, who was an emulator developer, killed himself, allegedly. He sent me a letter basically saying, you will accept all my earthly possessions and allow me to do slave labor for you, developing code for the Kiwi farms or whatever, uh, or I will kill myself and I will make sure that everyone knows that you are the reason that I killed myself. And I was like, oh, gosh, golly, G. Willikers, mister. Uh, let me think on that, because that sounds like legally dubious gray area. And before I could, I, and I, I'll tell you what, I don't think I even mentioned this on stream. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I said, uh, give me a day to think this over. I have to talk to my attorney anyways. So um, I did. I sent an email to, to my attorney. I have like three right now. So, But I sent um, an email to Hardin, who I don't know if it's Hardin or Hardin. Uh, but he's the guy that's representing me against Melinda Scott in Virginia. And uh, I like him the most out of all my attorneys. Um, he he is very thoughtful and very, um, what's the word? He, he, he's, um, he's always like ahead of things. You know, he's never like react. He's, he's very, um, it's like progressive or aggressive, but different he's not reactionary he, he handles things like on time and without being asked and without uh any issues so uh well scordis i mean scordis i don't think scordis likes me very much <laughs> uh but his his law firm is fine um proactive proactive yes Harden is very proactive and he's he seems to actually sympathize with my plight whereas the other other attorneys are mostly like you know representing me as a matter of of an obligation in terms of of um legal issues in the u.s anyways my point is i sent him a letter and i said what do you think about this and he said uh you know i don't want to paraphrase him but he basically said i wouldn't worry about it too much because you're not really doing anything illegal by having a forum thread like this on him as far as I can see anyways. So I said I was going to reply the next day after thinking on it. I, I really thought reading his letters that he just was like this lonely guy who was like, oh, I'm going to troon out and go to Japan and be a weeaboo and everyone's going to love me because I'm going to develop this awesome program and I'll have friends because I'll, I'm developing this program and I'll have friends because I'm in Japan living out my anime dreams and I'll, oh, I'm still not happy. I'm living in Japan and I made this thing and people still don't like me because I'm like a weird diaper for, you know, cub artist or whatever the fuck. Not artist, but consumer of cub type material. Uh, I'll become non-binary. I'm I'm they them now. Am I hip and popular and trendy and cool? And oh, that's also not working. I guess I'm going to kill myself because of a forum thread. And I, I was like, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll offer him. Um, I, I I would like his help doing things because I have many things that I would like to do. I have many th things that have been on my checklist from like 2017 in terms of shit I want to add to the forum to make it a better website. In turn, like I wanted, I want, I've wanted wiki style editing of of original posts, the first post in the thread, for like years now. But it's such a an undertaking that I would need help to really commit to that. So I was going to come back to him and said, like, look, dude, I think you just need like people to work with, and if you want to work with me on my shit then I don't know, maybe we can make money and sell add-ons on the Zen Forum market and stuff, and it'll it'll pick you up. That was literally going to be a, a counter offer I give to him, but then I wake up in the morning, and he's already said, oh, you're taking too long, I'm going to kill myself, goodbye, and don't post any of our emails, because if you do, it'll make you look bad. Goodbye, I'm dead. And then that was it. That was the end of the correspondence I had with him. It's like, okay, what a fucking asshole. I'm glad I don't have to work with you. <laughs> um, so the only... The only verification that has ever come out comes from two sources. A guy named Wayne Beckett, who is an emulator developer. He's English, but he lives in Hong Kong, and he's an emulator developer. He's uh, been around for apparently a decade, though there's not a lot on him in public. I just know that he's English and he lives in Hong Kong, and he's apparently someone who's contracted you in the past. And then his, so this guy, who is his boss, posts this picture. Post this, oh, my, fuck, my fucking dead gay fucking site. I'll talk about the DDoS shit, too. Uh, don't, I'm going to put the note for that. Uh, okay, so he posts this urn. And, the, and ABC Today literally told me, that our USA Today literally told me that this picture 
was reasonable enough evidence that uh, Bu is dead because his boss had this urn. And I want to tell you guys, I like I like to talk about China. I don't know if you guys know this, but I, I love China, right? So I'm gonna give you guys a, a fast and a quick, uh, or quick and quick and hard little China tip right now in terms of Hong Kong. So you see this island? I got this pulled up already. This is Hong Kong. And it's a really big city, right? And it takes up this island that used to be a part of the British Empire, right? So then we go, what's this? What's this north of Hong Kong? Well, this is, of course, China. And what's in China right here? It's a city called Shenzhen. Shenzhen is the biggest warehouse in the entire fucking world. This entire city is one gigantic Walmart that you can buy anything you want to. Like if we look out, it's just the highways built around Shenzhen. It is so intricate with these massive highways connecting literally like I think like a like a hundred million people live around in this province around in Guangdong. Uh, around Shenzhen. So it's a, it's a massive area and you can buy anything that you want there anything i bet you you could take five hundred dollars and not only find this exact urn in shenzhen you could find real human remains to put in your fucking urn in shenzhen i'm pretty sure for and then you would still have enough money to pay the border guard to let you back into hong kong right it, it's a big ass fucking city and it's one of the major exports where all made in china stuff flows through out to the world so that this guy in hong kong obtaining a urn with uh, with this cheap ass fucking print on the front it looks like a crock pot like a betty crocker crock pot cooking a chicken up in there with some letters on it and Xinjiang, it like it wouldn't even take you a day you could find a, an, a ceramics place that could make this for you in like a couple hours and then you could go find uh a, you know like a science depot that sells uyghur remains for you know down the street and you could put the two together and then you would have your proof that Bu is dead for USA Today, right? Uh, so the other one is uh, Hector Martin, who just put out and literally put out a statement saying, "I have received an anonymous note from a credible source." So that credible source could just be Wayne Beckett again, but more likely it's Bu himself that wrote this note and say Hector Martin published this. And the entire note is just like Kiwi Farms did it. It's so terrible and horrible. Wouldn't it be great if the fucking site was deleted from the internet forever, right? And then uh, we, some Spurg, some, some Spurg realized, hey, the state, I don't know why he knows this, but the State Department puts out a list every, every um, six months of listing how many Americans have died overseas and when they died. And it's like, okay, well, we'll wait for this list to come out then, right? So it comes out and not a single fucking person that is an American citizen, according to the State Department, died in the month that uh, June, died in the month that Bu allegedly killed himself in. Not a single fucking person died in June in, in, in the entire country of Japan that was a U.S. citizen, according to the United States State Department. And if you don't think that the Japanese Department of State is going to relay the fact that an American citizen hanged himself in Japan to the State Department of the United States, uh, you know, like the same fucking day, you're out of your mind because they are like freakazoids when it comes to like paperwork. And I'll tell you a story. This is how astute the Japanese are about paperwork. When I was traveling with Frederick, who, if you don't know, is seriously disabled and needs a wheelchair. And he, he is so disabled, he cannot push his wheelchair. Like you think of like Joe Swanson from Family Guy pushing his wheelchair around, big, strong upper body. No, Frederick can't do that. He's got two chicken wings that break if you, you know, if he tr hits, it, literally if he rolls over a very steep bump in his wheelchair, he will break bones in his body. Cannot roll a wheelchair, needs an electric wheelchair. While he's in the Philippines, he buys a electric wheelchair. But he because it's made in the Philippines, it's very cheap. But he doesn't check if it's air safe because the um, United Nations, you know, the, the UN coordinator for aviation has very specific rules about batteries because if they decompress in um, a low uh, pressure environment, they can explode and that causes a problem. So you don't want big batteries in the airplane. You have to have small batteries. 
We have flown this fucking wheelchair to like four different countries and he has never had issues. He's flown it in and out of the United States. I'm pretty sure he's flown it in and out of Singapore. He's flown it in and out of the Philippines. Never had issues. We get to Japan and these motherfuckers, like these people just working like airport security who have like a baseline level of education in Japan are pulling out like the guidebook to look up the voltage and calculate watt hours to make sure that this battery is air traffic safe. And literally after an hour of being detained and, and arguing and, and flat out lying because I calculated the watt hours and it was completely illegal to bring that fucking battery into an airplane. Uh, they let us through. They just say, fuck it, let this cripple in with his battery. Who gives a shit? Um, so the, to tell me that those people who uh, will, will pull out the fucking guidebook to check a cripple's wheelchair battery are not going to report the death of an American citizen to the State Department in a timely manner is bullshit. But that's exactly what this guy says. He says, apparently the U.S. State Department stats aren't actually complete uh, through the end of the reporting period. And Kiwi Farms is now going to be harassing me for six months until that gets backfilled. I'll be signing off Twitter again. I don't have time to deal with this crap. I spoke face to face with a police detective who confirmed near's passing and showed me their resident card usa today confirmed it with their boss who again lives in hong kong south and his only proof is that this fucking pot the ceramic pot that you can buy that you can make yourself for twenty dollars is the only evidence that this man is fucking dead uh he continues i don't care whether this u.s department of state got their record the which was three days before the cutoff or not they're gone i'll leave this account logged in on my streaming pc for stream notifications blah 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 consider it push only so bullshit like just bullshit like you don't think my fucking government can my government does one thing right it counts bodies the united states government cannot be trusted to do anything else right except count those fucking bodies they might they might call them uh you know vietnamese Viet Cong insurgents when they're just peasant children but they'll count those fucking bodies perfectly to to the to the decimal sir I don't believe you, so fuck you, and fuck this bullshit, and of course I'm not going to get an apology, DreamHost isn't going to be like, oh sorry, we didn't know, uh, now we should have erred on the side of caution, we should have let the legal system do its thing, we shouldn't have taken a side in this, here, have your account back, and now fuck you, none of that shit's going to happen, you think Twitter's going to apologize, no. And then, like, if this, if, if I were to shut the site down, Bew would be back developing this fucking add-on under some bullshit name like Mew in, like, three months. It's such bullshit. I fucking hate these people. And, like, what am I going to do? Am I going to sue him? I guess I could. I, you know, I probably have, I probably have a case against him. If, uh, you know, it's uphill. I first have to find him. I have to find a servicing agent to, to hunt this man down, but they all have a reason. Hector Martin, um, Wayne Beckett, and uh, Bew were all emulator developers who had legal issues with Nintendo. And supposedly, copyright is like a criminal case in Japan. And if he tried to leave the country with pending copyright criminal charges, he would not be allowed to leave. So he had a reason to fake his death. He had a motive to fake his death. He had an excuse to fake his death. And he had a way to do it. He had people that would back him up. And then they can just buy a fucking pot. And because they had a viable scapegoat, USA Today would report that as evidence that he's actually dead. As opposed to literally anything else. And by the way, uh, I'm, I've talked about this before, but... I want you to think about this guy's story. He is a, a Baka Gaijin from America, right? He, he is, he's a whitey. And he's going to call up the, jet, the Tokyo Police Department and be like, Moshi Moshi, has Bu killed himself? Ooh, I need to see his ID, please. Kiwi Farms bad, killed himself. And then the other guy would be like, oh yeah, of course, here you go, random person with no blood or marriage relationship to the deceased whatsoever. Here's his resident card. He is in fact very dead. Click, hangs up the phone. Fuck you. Bullshit. Just, and the fact that people buy this, they don't even buy it. Nobody ever believes any of this shit. They just say, oh, it's the Kiwi Farms. It's so bad, blah, blah, blah. I feel really terrible. This is, can't, he can't keep getting away with it. And then they move on to the next outrage. And it's, it's utter fucking bullshit. And meanwhile, I, I, not, I really don't even know. He said it was face-to-face. -face. Well, he, that changed, by the way. He fucking lied. Because he said, 
earlier he called and they confirmed the death and now it's face to face so i guess he then you know flew over to to um to japan and then said oh hey it's that baki gaijin that called you on the phone earlier uh ikidakimasu i want to see his residency card and then the same guy is just like oh sure here you go and then he can't like take a picture of it there's no certificate of death that he can take a picture of can't get an affidavit from the fucking guy saying hello i'm you know chief inspector hiroshima nagasaki and i testify under penalty of perjury that this nigga fucking dead can't get that either that's fucking no no, that's too hard but he can he definitely got that phone call and he definitely flew over there and he definitely met him face to face and fuck you kiwi farms look at the pot look at the pot if the pot fits you must acquit that's the rule fuck you okay um oh yeah and then yeah Bu in his email said i sent scans of my ids to all my friends so that after i commit seppuku uh they'll release it and that'll be my proof never fucking happened where's his passport scan are you protecting his documents are you afraid of getting arrested for identity fraud because uh, of a dead man's last wish to prove that he's fucking dead fuck you ah <sighs> So frustrating. It's like such a blatant scam. I, I'm only happy that more shit didn't come of it. I really thought that this was going to be it for things like our, our DDoS protection. And granted, we lost our upstream network filtering. And I, I guess I'll just explain the DDoS shit happening today. Uh, or or the, not even today, but the last three months. It started with the BU. Immediately after BU, the site went down. And then after the um, Ajanka stuff, that the site got hit like twice. I could see from my diagnostics that the site was getting attacked in multiple different ways. So I don't know if it was one guy with a booter, like, set to multiple settings. I don't know what the fuck the situation was with that. But it got harder and harder. And um, basically, I'm going to have to close 1776 hosting to the public. We've had an uptime for client services of about, like, 20% the last three months because I've just had to shut off our network um, in order to keep anything up at all. Uh, so that's a, a huge fucking mess. Um, and, I, and I feel bad for people who need the hosting, but it's like, what, what am I supposed to do? Our upstream filtering refuses to peer with us, and I, I like this guy is just going to spend his money to attack the site. And it's not like a huge amount of money. Like, it's not prohibitively expensive. I'll put it this way. It takes less money to rent a DDoS service to bring down a network than it costs to put that network up. A net like a one gigabit per second line <clears throat> is like, um, I want to say like two fifty a month. Uh, it, it's not cheap, but then like a ten gigabit per second DDoS attack is something like you know, like a hundred to two hundred dollars a month for a really good one. And that's like t 10 gigabits minimum because booters kind of work in this weird way where they provision it in seconds. So like if you buy a cheap booter, you'll only have like an hour of DDoS. But if you buy a really expensive one, then you'll get like 12 to 24 hours at a time. So I think the guy that's doing this one has rented a booter that has about like in between. So probably about $100 a month in um and downtime probably between one and ten gigabits per second and every eight hours he just clicks the button to restart the ddos and that's it and he's just been spending his you know his money every month to, to continue doing this just to waste my fucking time and patience um but i've been uh part of the reason why i haven't prepared for the stream as much is because i i got home i i gave a guy um who i trust some access to the forum and the network and stuff to help mitigate the denial of service attack while I was away. And he did an okay job of that. He did the best he could, basically, and he found a way to um, keep the site up, albeit slow, because better fixes would require more work from me specifically. But he found a way to keep it up, and I'm very thankful for that. So I got to enjoy my vacation without worrying about it too much. Um, <clears throat> But, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just fucking annoying because it's so pointless. The site stays up. It's just inconveniencing people who want to run, you know, small offensive things. And, and I, can't, I can't offer that because I can't find upstream filtering. And uh, if I want to get upstream filtering on my own, I know of one upstream filter who isn't political like services like X4B and Path and um, Boxility. Boxility, all those drop. Cloud uh, 8chan, for instance, um, they charge 
starting. I they priced me for this personally, and they said that this is the low end, keeping in mind that I don't have any budget. It is three thousand dollars a month, and there's no fucking way. Like I can, I can stretch some things. I can move money. I can, you know, shill a little bit harder, do more streams. There is no fucking way I can flex my budget to uh, in, in afford three thousand dollars a month. It's just out of the question. Um, so I have to, I have to be creative and find other ways around it. And it's just a pain in the ass to the point where if you go to the Kiwi Farms right now, it's kind of fast actually. Um, depending on what refresh you get, but compare it like compare it to kiwifarms.tw, which routes through Asia, and compare it to kiwifarms.ru, which routes through Moscow, and those are alternate front ends I have set up. But then I dare you go if you have Brave and you go to kiwifarms.net, you'll see a button on every page that says Open and Tour. Click that button. The first time you click it to the first page load, it's going to be kind of slow because the Brave browser has to establish an, what's called an onion circuit, and that takes a couple seconds, maybe 30 seconds. But after that, refresh the page in Tor. Click around. It loads faster than it does on ClearNet. I don't know how the fuck that happened, but um, I'm happy. I'm happy the, the Tor people finally have a service that works because I've had to shut that down because they were using Tor to DDoS the fucking forum too. Just a mess. It crashes a lot more on tour. Um, that should be fixed. Like I, I've been working on this ever since I got back, so all that shit should be fixed. The site should be pretty fast, pretty stable. You shouldn't be getting that many errors, and tour should work just fine. Uh, just, just crazy, man. Uh, and, and, and it's for what? To annoy me. I get these threatening emails from this guy who says like, oh, I'm not aligned with anyone. I'm just playing with you because I'm developing my own DDoS tools, man. And I'm just like fucking with you because it's like a, a challenge, man. And it's like, no, I, I don't believe that for a second because number one, I see the behaviors of someone who is renting a booter, specifically that eight hour recycle because he has a he has a fucking he has rented something. He's paying in Bitcoin, you know, $100 a month to get access to something where he can press a button every eight hours to a certain attack. And I, I see it for what it is because at night, after midnight EU time, uh, it, it's off until about 10 in the morning, my time. So I, I know he's, uh, he's letting it cycle to the end of the day, and then it turns off automatically, and then he restarts it the next day. Uh, it's just such, it's so annoying. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's that. Let me get some water.